Friends, reading this passage quickly or suggests to us we could have communion, but we are not having communion today. Today's passage brings before us one of the big statements that Jesus Christ spoke about his identity. Jesus says, I am the living bread. However, this statement does not find meaning in its isolated context. It fits well in the bigger picture of God's life and love for humanity and the world. God shares love and life with humanity and the world, all that through Jesus Christ. Therefore, understanding this passage in this context would help us to respond to the invitation, to the call to live in Christ and with Christ. This call by Jesus defines who we are in this world at the moment and what we shall become. It enables us to embody eternity in the present and live out our lives in enduring communion with God. Living in Christ and living with Christ, put it this way, is the message that Christ is sharing with the people that gathered when he said, eat the bread of life. If we follow the narrative from the preceding verses, we shall discover that it is not the first time that Jesus is in conversation with these people. Jesus dealt with their need for food by feeding them with bread and fish. After feeding them, Jesus left as his usual custom. But the people followed Jesus and found him in Capernaum. At this time, Jesus does not give them the bread and the fish they got, but tells them that he is the bread they need. Jesus calls himself the bread of life that came from heaven. Jesus uses the metaphor of the bread in this context because Bread is the food that many, many people ate and associated with. Bread is surprisingly common in our times, though separated by more than 2,000 years from Jesus' time. The use of bread today is not only limited to the religious events, but it is also, it is also used in many, many other events. Books have been written about bread, and I was privileged the past week to read a book about the spirituality of bread, written by Donna Sinclair. Donna contends in her book partly, as she expresses this spirituality, that the feast celebrated by people in most gatherings is more than pie, cake, wine, or bread then what, it, what is it? It is about love. No food says I love you more than bread, she says. Suggestively here, Donna uses bread to express her deep spirituality in Christ and also remembering Christ as the bread of life. Sharing bread expresses her faith in Christ, who truly says in this passage is the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life, offers his audience to eat the living bread, as doing so will give them eternal life. Jesus takes this opportunity to share with them a holistic response to human life. At first, remember, Jesus dealt with their physical need, but now he turns to their spiritual need. This demonstrates that life in Jesus does not just deal with either the spiritual 
or the physical, but it is about both or oh, and. There is no separation of our needs because this too constitutes who we are. We are both the spiritual and physical beings, if I were to put it that way. However, this eternal life we receive by eating the bread comes at the cost, at the cost of Jesus' life. Jesus will have to offer his flesh. This is very confusing. And perhaps that's why the audience were surprised and confused about it. Imagining ourselves sitting in the audience without other synoptic gospels that explain the salvific import of the incarnation of Jesus and his death, we would be wondering what Jesus meant by eating his flesh. Perhaps it is still one of those difficult things we have to deal with to understand the meaning of living in Christ and living with Christ today. But connecting this story with the Exodus narrative or reading it parallel with the Exodus narrative, we can discern that Jesus uses the things that are very familiar to the people that he was talking to. He picks out what they know from their tradition and gives it meaning in his saving work. Jesus wants the people to have an enduring communion or relationship with God, not based on temporal things, but based on God's eternal life and love. This enables Christ to connect this message to his death and his resurrection. It is interesting that Jesus does not use the word believe here. Instead, he insists that people should eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. So whosoever feeds on Christ's flesh and blood will have eternal life, not just now, but they will be raised even on the day of the resurrection. The concept of feeding suggests that someone has to rely on it because Christ gives true food and true drink. Therefore, those that respond to the call to live in Christ and live with Christ, they abide in Christ and Christ abides in them. Jesus explains eternity to the audience by stating that his eternal relationship is with the Father, God. The audience must understand that eternal life is in God alone, the source of life or source of being. Jesus says, as the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whosoever feeds on me will live because of me. This connection to the source of life, all life, shows that living in Christ and living with Christ is an enduring communion. An enduring communion with God, like I said earlier, is not based on temporal things. But here we can confirm it is based on living in Christ and with Christ. And so when we live in Christ, we express our life, our living in Christ, and living with Christ by following Jesus. Sharing our lives with others. Being there for others in all life passages or celebrating, celebrating God's presence in worship and sacraments. Therefore, in our participation, as we celebrate the sacrament of communion, breaking the bread and drinking the cup, we continue proclaiming truly Christ's death and also how Christ's abundant life 
affects our everyday life. Celebrating communion should always remind us, among many other things, the gracious gift of Jesus Christ, and that is eternal life. Thus, this life is not just futuristic, it is life also dealing with the present. It is lived in the present. Living in Christ and living with Christ who enable us to extend this enduring communion to our neighbors, who extend it to the orphans, who extend it to the vulnerable people, who extend it to the seniors, who extend it also to the sick, who live in harmony with those seeking, who live in harmony with those discerning, who live in harmony with those discovering who they are. It is about participating in God's ministry and sharing with all God's people God's love and life. In Christ, people experience abundant life here, not just for the future, all together here on earth. And as followers of Christ, this communion with Christ bears fruit in us when we are open. We are open to abide in Christ and Christ in us. In this union, we will get to know more about Jesus Christ and ourselves. In this union, we will get to know more about Christ and our neighbors. In this union, we will get to know more about Christ and the oppressed and the neglected, as well as the despised peoples. We will get to know more about Christ and what we have to let go as we grow in Christ. We will get to know more about Christ and his love for the seniors. We will get to know more about Christ and his love for the shut-ins. We will get to know more about Christ and his love for the children. We will get to know more about Christ and his love for the depressed, his love for the excluded, his love for justice, and his love for God's people. This gift of eternal life comes, comes from the eternal God. It is not bread that your forefathers and mothers, your ancestors ate. It is not manna. Jesus refers them back to the Exodus narrative. It is not the manna that they ate and died, but it is the bread of life that came from heaven. And so when someone eats, has eternal life. Therefore, feeding on this bread, Jesus Christ, people will live and live forever. It is eternal life now and eternal life tomorrow. Eternal life that affects us today, eternal life that affects our tomorrow. It is about both. This eternal life transforms our lives as we seek our becoming rather than being static. It is eternal life that empowers both the present and the future. And so, yes, our present and future is defined by this life that we have in Christ. And also how we respond to God's call to join God's mission for God's people. When we are aware of this union, when we are aware of this life, we become practical and always participate in the fight against injustice. We become practical and participate in the provision of humanitarian aid to God's people in need. Jesus said to his audience and called them to feed on him. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And called them to feed on him the bread of life. Jesus is calling us. Jesus is inviting us to eat the bread of life. And so when we read through the hymn 194 from More Voices, we hear that this voice, 
when Jesus feeds our souls, our hunger and our thirst is no more. When Jesus feeds our souls, our hunger and thirst is no more. We become aware of whose we are. We strive to live a life as pure and true as Jesus did. We see the boundless love of Christ for humanity. We hear the voice of God calling us to act justly. We see possibility of living in love, inclusion, welcoming, and caring for one another. Thus, we continue confessing that Jesus is the bread of life. And we respond to this call to eat the bread of life or the living bread by living in Christ and living with Christ. To God be the glory. Amen.